Hey, morning, y'all. This is Mike from Retirement Train Straight Talk, where I give you the simple truth every day in every video from my perspective. All right, well, it's 2024, and what a great time for new opportunities, right? It's a new year. We all, we all want to do our best, and we all don't wake up in the mornings and say, hey, listen, I want to fail. We don't do that. But before we get into that, well, it's early in the morning here, around 6, got the lights on in the office. I figured I'd do another video, trying a little bit different with this objective here um, to see how this uh, new app works for me. I, I thought I'd, you know, give it another year or so with this retirement train since I've put so much effort in it uh, leading up to the execution of its, uh, of its start in May. Of last year uh only got about 1200 people but you know what i appreciate y'all uh, the more we can get the word out the better i'm not a financial advisor y'all i'm a straight shooter i tell you like it is i've done by experience um i don't have all the answers but i can tell you uh, what i've done and that's all i can do that's all most of us can do unless they're financial advisors and have you know certifications in this financial world and even then, let's just be honest, if they can tell you what the stock market was going to do tomorrow, they'd all be billionaires, all right? There's a lot of financial advisors that have a lot less money than I do, and it's not always about the money. It's about how to prepare for retirement and to get the money that you need in retirement. That's what their job is, and that's what my job is here for you um, I think to give you the some thoughts and some ideas on how to prepare for retirement and show you the things that I'm doing in retirement. I think that's that was the plan, the original plan for this um, retirement train straight talk. Uh, before it was the goat locker, and so I changed the name because I thought the retirement train would be kind of cool. Everybody can get on the train and move forward. So I thought, you know. So anyway, I'm gonna try it again this year for a period of time, see how it goes. Um, and I hope a lot of folks can jump on board if you haven't yet forward this uh you know YouTube channel on to your friends and, and family. And I'm gonna give you like it is uh, no fancy graphs or pictures, pretty simple talk. Um I might not be the best speaker, but at least I'll tell you like it is from my perspective. All right, onward as they say. Um, 2024, a great time for great opportunities. And I think those opportunities are, are vast for all of y'all. Um, if you're in your 50s, well, hell, if you're in your 40s, but more importantly, if you're closing down on the last seven to five years of your retirement date, I recommend that you pack as much money away as you can in your 401k, your 403, excuse me, 403b, uh, if you're a school teacher or something of that matter, uh, your IRA, um, any other avenue that, that you can pack in your Roth, all those things matter. Uh, it does make a difference which bucket of money you put additional money into, but I think it's important that at least you put it in something. And put as much of it as you can. What do I mean by that? Well, for instance, I know Christmas just came and gone. The holidays came and gone. Now, most folks, not all, but they max out their credit cards to help their family get their children what they want, which is nice. And, you know, they pay that credit card off throughout the year and they do the same thing again. Now, what is that a definition for? I'm not saying it's a definition for failure. But I, I, I will say, you really don't get ahead when you can be using that money for something else, put it to work and making that money compound for you. Um, what do they say about the definition of insanity? Repeating the same thing over and over again with the same conclusion, right? It doesn't work, y'all. If you can't pay your credit card off at the end of the month before the interest accrues, I'm sorry, you probably shouldn't have a credit card. You probably should use a bank card. 
that you can only use the money that's in your account. It, it, it's, it's good mentally because it restrains you from going overextending yourself because it's easy to do. We're all human, right? We all want things for our family and friends. But I got to tell you, these last seven years prior to retirement or five years, whatever it is, you should be packing that money away because you're not going to thank me. You're going to thank yourself because it's going to be a big difference. $50,000, $100,000 is going to make a big difference in your life in retirement. Just saying. All right. Enough about that. Onward, as they say. As you all know, I love the Wall Street Journal. All right. There's an interesting article in here by Susie Orman. Susie Orman was a, she's a talking head for financial. She's a financial icon. Uh, I don't always agree with her. Um, she is a uh, financial advisor. I believe she used to be a, um, a, a, um, a broker in the stock market years ago on the trading floor. But I think that's what I read upon her. In any case, a good article in there. And they were doing an um, <clears throat> interview with her because she's starting up a new, she has her own uh, investment firm. And I believe she lives down there in the Bahamas somewhere. But they were asking her several questions. One question was, I, she goes, what do young people tend to get wrong about finances? And then she's pretty clear. She goes, they don't understand the value of compounding and that the key to their financial independence is their age. So, for instance, let's say you're 25 years old and you put $100 a month in the standard and poor S&P 500, in other words, index fund through a Roth IRA every single month for 12 months every year until you're 65. It's very probable that you will have an average return of 12%. Now, that's average. That's not linear. That's over time, right? So over 40 years, what she's saying is that you'll have over a million dollars. You take that same person, that person waits 10 years till they're 35. You're lucky if you'll have three fifty, three hundred fifty thousand dollars $350,000. Now, what's the difference? Same amount of money, just 10 years later. It's, it's, it's compounding. The compounding effect, it's money as it grows. Your dollar, your army of dollar bills have to move forward. And they compound over and over and over a period of time, over 40 years, you're going to make a lot of money. Now, to be transparent and honest here, I didn't really get into heavy investing until I was at around 32. And, you know, it, I started late, but I knew. So that person was putting $100 away. I was throwing down three, four hundred, maybe $500 a month in a mutual fund. That's right. It was hard, but I did it. I had a family, um, and it, it was tough, and I get it. I didn't buy new cars. I didn't buy that, you know, all the fancy stuff. And I know today's generation wants instantaneous gratification. I get it. That's the world we live in. But I'm telling you, if you're in your late 40s, early 50s, and you want to retire at 55 or 60, you're talking 15 years. Let's say you're 45. You got to hustle. You got to hustle and, and, and you got to hope and pray, I guess, that the stock market is going to be your friend. And it's normally not because people who win in the stock market aren't the one day wonders. A few are, very rarely, but the one day wonders don't normally make it very long. The tortoise always wins the race. It takes time. It takes time to compound. It takes time for your money. And that's the whole gist of uh, Susie Orman's article here. And I don't believe in everything she, she talks about. I don't. But she's right about that. And if you ask any financial advisor, they'll tell you the same thing. Um, it's just common sense. And, it, and, you know, numbers don't lie. So over a period of time, the S&P 500 has always has gained around 11 or 12 percent over a 30, 40 year period of time. It just has. Um, 
and it's probably the best gauge of, of the stock market. So if you want to make some money over time and you're in your 30s or 40s or 20s, yeah, the earlier the better. I'm just saying. You don't need a lot of money when you're young to have a lot of money when you're older. You need a lot of money when you're older to have a little bit of income when you're older. It's just the way it is because no one tells you that in high school or or college or or the military. They don't tell you about investing. Yeah, they give you the what the general dynamics about it. But boy, if I had this conversation that we're doing right now when I was 19, 17, yeah, I'd have put it all in the stock market. I would have invested in something. I would have put more money in the bank, uh, CDs, all the above. Hell, no one told me this stuff. And I want you all to have a successful retirement and do the things that you want to do. So get on board this train and subscribe if you don't mind. I'd appreciate it. All right. So that's Susie Orman's article. I have to agree with her. She's right. Um, but there's other things that you should be thinking about too now. Now, those of you who have just, um, I should say that don't have a retirement pension coming in. You really got to think about how you're going to make this work for you in the end, right? So if it takes you to work a few more years because you are you only got like $150,000 put into a, to a uh, IRA or a 401k or 403b, well, you know, depending on what you think you need to live on, depending on your financial situation, is your house paid off, your cars are paid off, um, you know, there's always something that's going to come up though, right? You're going to need a new car eventually. Maybe not. Maybe you can walk. But the point is, you, you probably will. You're going to have to have some type of car that's going to make things happen for you, right? Might not be perfect, but you're going to need it. You're going to need a new HVAC, right? System, air conditioning unit, uh, pipes break, etc. You're going to have emergency issues come up. You see my point, and I'm going forward with it. All these things should be planned for you prior to retirement. But as the house ages and you age, things break down. So all those things matter. Medical. What's your medical going to be? So you see my point. You have to plan smartly. And if you love what you're doing and you don't need to retire, well, I guess just keep working. Most folks want to get out of the right race and enjoy their time. Uh, and do the things that they want to do on their own time. You can't always do that while you're working. A lot of folks love working from home right now. It seems like it's great, but that's all going to end eventually. Uh, folks are going to have to get back to work. If you can keep a couple days work from home, that's good. It may keep you in the workforce for a couple more years to pad up and build up that savings or investment account. That's important. The other thing I, I want to kind of stress on you is that don't go after these, uh, you know, one-time wonder investments, guys. I'm just telling you, I did it when I was younger and it's going to, it's going to just run you down a rabbit hole and you're going to lose your money. Most people, unless you really know what you're doing, you just got to be careful, be a little conservative, put some money in the safe area, uh, invest smartly, in a good ETF like the S and P 500, some some solid stocks that you think are solid. This is my train of thought. This is what I do. I'll just tell you right now. I try to I try to buy stocks that I use every day. Johnson and Johnson, uh, Google. That's just me. Um, Amazon. Love Amazon. Everybody should have Amazon in the sense of, uh, and you probably do if if you're in a 401k. Most of them have it, but I have it individually too. But because I use it. Uh, they're not staple stocks. They're not blue chip. They're tech. But they ought to be staple because everybody in the world uses them in some form or fashion, right? Most folks. Um, so I think of it that way. What stocks can I, that I, what stocks should I buy because I use the product all the time? Those things are important to me. I use Apple, Apple phone. I'm talking to you on one right now. Those sorts of things. And again, most 401ks have these in them. Not all, but a lot of them do. And they're in there for a reason, because they're making money. All right? 
So those things are important. Just a just a couple tidbits for you. Uh, if you're if, if you're thinking about what to invest in, but at this point in time, you probably already have that down. And I just recommend you put as much away as you can and do away with the things that you don't need so you can put that extra money away. Some of the stuff you really don't need. And even if you think you need it, you probably don't. And you're going to have to sacrifice. That's just, this is straight talk. I'm just going to tell you, you're going to have to sacrifice some things to get ahead in life. Uh, to get to where you want to retire decently, right? Your own way. And it doesn't matter how much money it is. It's just something that you need. It's going to satisfy you and your family, right? That's what you have to think about. All right. So the other thing I want to talk about briefly is, so you've got everything done. Your planning is complete. Um, but you're just not there where you want to be mentally. So you want to keep going to work and work a little bit longer. You know, if you're if you're able to do a sabbatical or something like that, get off for a few months and see see what it would be like traveling and doing that, those sorts of things, go ahead and do that so you get your mind ready. Because I'm telling you, once you stop working, your whole mindset changes. It takes a week or two, but you do, you change. I did. I thought I couldn't do it, but I did it. I walked away at 61, and, I, and again, and, and again, and again, and again, I always say, I wish I did it at 55. So I think you're going to love it. If you plan for it correctly and do the right things, you'll have it down. Well, that's my tidbits. I wish everybody a happy new year and onward w with your investing and your retirement planning. Um, and we'll talk again in another couple of days. Y'all take care. Don't forget to subscribe down below, hit the like button, and pass this uh, channel on to other folks who need some help getting ready for retirement. Y'all take care. God bless. Great talk out.